Good morning. Welcome to Silver Lake United Methodist Church. It is good to see each and every one of you here this morning. My name is Lucas McConnell, and I have the privilege of being the pastor here at Silver Lake. Uh, I want to extend a special welcome to those visitors that we may have, uh, guests or uh, fa visiting family members, and uh, say welcome. Thank you for joining us in worship, and uh, we hope that you join us again and that this time is meaningful to you and a meaningful uh, time for worship. If you're a first-time guest, I invite you to check out our uh, visitor center uh, in the back there, and, and I think we have some gifts for you and some more information about the church as well. So before we begin worship, uh, let us open up with a time of announcements and sharing uh, what's going on here in our very active community of Silver Lake United Methodist. Who wants to? You got Deb right here. Um, today, tomorrow's the last day to sign up for the painting party, which is next Sunday, to support the youth group. I had several people in fellowship hour tell me last week they were intimidated by it, so I'm very creatively challenged, so I brought a few that I've done. There's one, and then here's another one. So trust me, if I can do this, anyone. <laughs> if I can do this, anyone can do this. And they make great presents for grandparents, so bring your kids. Very good. Very good. What other announcements do we have? Oh, okay. I see that the corral is filling up. Thank you for your donations. Um, I opted to just write a check, and there's an envelope in the corral for checks. That's easy for the youth to transport to the fairgrounds in Lawrence. Um, so anyway, thank you for your donations. Very good. Roundup for hunger. We got Renee over here. Um, as you can see on the board, this week's Wednesday meal is chicken and noodles. But I also want to announce that next Wednesday on the 16th, it will be hot beef sandwiches, and the proceeds go to Good Neighbor Mission. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Back to Wednesday meals. Um, yes, this week is chicken and noodles, and if anybody has not been, you really need to come to that meal. It's homemade noodles and chicken by Jeannie Snyder. It's awesome. And of course, the hot beef sandwiches are always a huge hit, and our Good Neighbor mission is an awesome mission that we do as a church. I would like to also say that my good friend Melinda Hinson is here, <laughs> and many of you already know her. Melinda works for the Federal Reserve, and this week she passed with a very high score, the toughest test that they have. So if you see her after church, congratulate her. She studied for two years for it. Congratulations. Good. All right. Well, I've got a few announcements. Uh, hang on. There's a few. There's, there's several. Uh, acolyte training after worship. This is initial training, but it's also a refresher uh, training. And so I invite, if you're in the ages of third grade and up, to uh, meet us in the fellowship hall at 1130. Uh, we're going to order some pizza. We're going to go over the responsibilities, the meaning of what it means to be an acolyte. And then we're going to come in here in the sanctuary and practice. And so this is a great ministry for our uh, youngsters to participate in worship and to help lead in worship. Uh, also next week, or this week rather, is a Veterans Day. And so next Sunday will be a Veterans Day um, service of sorts. And so I invite you, if you've served, to perhaps, as you feel comfortable, wear the unit insignia that, um, that you are a unit of part of, or, or your rank, or, or somehow to participate uh, as you are comfortable, uh, and so that we may recognize you and recognize service, and also explore the meaning of what it means to serve and what our strengths for our services are. Uh, if it makes you feel comfortable, I'll probably be in my uniform uh, as well. Another plug for pledge cards. I know that the letter said October 31st, but we'll take a pledge card any time of the day, year. And so uh, we still need your pledges. Your pledges are important to us. And so I invite you, there's some cards out uh, back, and, or take the one that you've received in the mail, and I invite you to get those in to the church office at your convenience. 
Fourth and uh, finally is uh, it's leadership season here at the church. We're looking for leaders. If you get a call from the Nominations Leadership Development Committee, it's because we're, we're, we want you to help serve in, in an official capacity, whether on a committee or, or in a ministry here at the church. But also, uh, if you feel called to serve in, in, in many ways, uh, we need stewardship, uh, sanctuary stewards to help light candles and prepare communion, I invite you to just get in touch with me. Or, or Stephanie, and, uh, and we can set you up in that way to participate. All right, what's last? Oh, apparently yesterday was Love Your Redhead Day. And so uh, shout out to all my redheads out there, and little brother up front. All right, and with that, I invite you to stand and greet your neighbor with the peace of Christ. you to remain standing as you... No, it's all right. <laughs> Will you please recite with me our mission statement as we prepare our hearts for worship. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to make a difference. Embrace God as the foundation of our lives. Engage as disciples in worship, study, and service, and extend the love of Christ to all people. And with that, I invite you to join in our opening hymn, In Christ Alone. remain standing and join me in the spoken call to worship. <clears throat> Sing praises to God, O you saints, and give thanks to God's holy name. We exalt you, O God, for you have restored us to life. 
We may cry through the night, but your joy comes with the morning. You hear us, O oh God, and you are gracious in our distress. You turn our mourning into dancing. Our souls cannot be silent, O oh God, our Savior. We give thanks to you forever. Please join me in our song of praise, We Fall Down. remain standing and join me in the unison prayer. We give you thanks, our God and Father, for all who have died in the faith of Christ, for the memory of their words and deeds and all they accomplished in their time, for the joyful hope of reunion with them in the world to come, and for our communion with them now. In your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Much better. Well, it's so good to see you. How many of you are really liking this November weather? Whoever prayed for the sun to shine a little longer, thank you. It's really, really nice weather. Okay, so today is All Saints Day. Does anybody know what that means? All Saints Day. Hmm. The youth know, because we talked about it this morning. But yes. It's when all saints come to church? In a way, we could kind of say that. Um, today is a day that we remember people that have passed away and that have died. Uh, but we also remember um, the life that they had and the things that they did um, for our church and for each of us in our faith walk. Has anybody ever had someone in your life pass away? It's really sad, isn't it? It's a sad um, time, but Today is a day where we can kind of um, be a little happy and celebrate um, their life a little bit. And last weekend, I went home to my hometown of Ark Kansas City, Ark City, Kansas, and I went to church where I grew up when I was your age. I went to church for the first time in probably 15 years. I think the last time I was there was when I was married, when I got married to Gerald. That was a long time ago. Yes, I looked a lot different then, for sure. And I went to church, and I sat there, and I looked around at all the people that were there, and some of them I didn't recognize, because they were little, they were younger like me, and they're all grown up now. Um, but I also looked around, and I remembered people who were older, 
when I was little. And there was this lady, her name was Nisha Mae Warren. And she was this littler um, lady, and I say littler because I was always short, so I liked her because I, I was at the same level as she. And she would sit in the second or third row and every Sunday morning, it didn't matter what kind of mood I was in, because I did not like to get up early and go to church, because I don't know about you guys, but my mom and dad made me go to church. And so sometimes I would be really, really grumpy. Yeah, you know, don't ya? I would be really, really grumpy, and sometimes I wouldn't smile at people. My mom worked for the church, so I felt like I had to be nice, but sometimes I wasn't very nice. And no matter what, when it came time, like we do the passing of the peace when we say good morning, she would say, good morning, Stephanie. Jesus bless you. God bless you. You have a great day. And no matter what kind of day I'd had, or what kind of morning I had, it kind of made me stop. And it kind of made me remember that God's love is bright and that we should be a little bit more cheerful and a little bit more happy. But she would write me little notes. And when I went off to college, she would send me little notes in the mail just saying, Jesus loves you, I love you, and I hope you have a really good day. Well, Nisha May passed away a long time ago. But I still remember, I'm 38 now, I was seven the first time I met her, and I still remember this little older lady that sat in the third row and that she always had a smile on her face and she always passed the love of, of God to other people. And today, um, in a little bit in our service, um, Pastor Lucas and Pam is going to ring a bell and we're going to remember those that have died just this year. But there are other people in our church um, that we're going to lift up too that have passed away. And it's a good reminder to remember um, that right now we may be a little sad because we can't be with them, but is this forever? Is it forever? Will we ever see them again? Where will we see them again? We will. We'll be together in heaven. Uh, but today we celebrate and we give thanks for all the saints, all the people that have helped us. Um, so today, if you think of anybody that has passed away, and you can remember, maybe it's a grandparent or a parent or an uncle or an aunt or just someone here at our church, and just take a little moment to say thank you, God, for, for what they did in our lives, and also a reminder to carry that love to other people so that someday... Um, we can pass that on to other people too. Okay? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the many saints that have come before us in our lives. Um, we thank you for all that they did uh, to help us grow in our Christian faith. And we just ask, we celebrate them and we ask that you be with us on this day in remembrance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is found in Ephesians 1, verses 11 to 23. can be found in your pew Bible, page 949. In Christ we are, have also obtained inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is a pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, 
far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join in the musical response to scripture, Open My Eyes That I May See. Omega, beginning and end, eternal life, eternal God. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all the saints gathered here together as Christ's body in this place might be good and pleasing to you. Come, Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts to the hope that you have given us through Jesus Christ. As we remember today this All Saints Sunday, those in our lives who have departed in faith, Lord, may we bolster our faith. May our hearts turn in our chests at the hearing of your gospel, not with fear or anxiety over the unknowns of our world or over death, but may our hearts turn and leap with unashamed joy at the hope you have given us, that we are called from death into life, and life beyond mortal death, yes, but also life here and now, through Jesus Christ. Amen. As I'm sure you by now are aware, this morning we are observing All Saints Sunday. All Saints, which it was officially Tuesday of last week, November 1st, following All Hallows' Eve or Halloween. It is to be noted that All Saints is different than the observance of All Souls' Day, which is, in fact, was Wednesday, November 2nd. It is different insofar as All Souls commemorates those who have died in the faith, and All Saints Day remembers not only those who have died in the faith, though it does, but also those who live in the faith. Yes, we gathered here this morning, our saints, not because we are perfect, but because we are works in progress. Because of God's grace and with the ever-refining work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our hearts, we are saints insofar as we are seeking. We are seeking justification, or right relationship with God, we are seeking sanctification, or the becoming more like God each and every day, living into that divine image in which we were created. We are seeking as followers of Jesus indeed to become holy, not on a high horse looking down on others, but rather to become holy, to be set apart by becoming more and more like Christ each day, living each day more and more like Jesus. It is this that makes us saints this morning, and in our faith joins us with those saints who have gone before us, who have indeed died in the faith. And it is through such seeking that our peculiarity as Christians shines forth strongly. For in recognizing All Saints Sunday, in remembering those who have died in the faith, we have the opportunity to remember and to contemplate the hope we have in Christ. That good news of Jesus that gives us the hope this morning and that draws us to worship, to fill this sanctuary. And remembering our hope in these times is absolutely crucial. For in the face of daily challenges of our lives, which is enough, in the face, we are also faced with the doubt and goodness when we read about headlines about evil in this world, uh, we, in realities of challenges to our health and bodies, in the toxic political environment that transmits 
a, a spirit of anxiety and fear-mongering, it is critical as we have the opportunity to remember, to claim the hope that we have in Jesus this morning. That peculiar hope we have as Christian saints this morning. Hope. It's a word that, like love, usually occupies a more casual, uh, flippant, even, meaning in our day-to-day -day interactions. Uh, often similar to how we say we love a sport or we love a certain food, our reciting of hope in church is often dulled by the more mundane hopes. I hope they get that email on time. I hope my hair looks all right this morning. I hope my team wins. Or with the election Tuesday, perhaps I hope my candidate wins. Hope. Now before you think me too much of a killjoy this morning and raise a counter-argument that indeed it is okay to hope in these things, I would say of course, of course. To desire an outcome in an event of the unknown future is not only acceptable, but it's indeed human. We hope many times because we do not know the future, and our hopes are turned often turn towards our own desires, turn inward towards our wants. But sometimes hope takes on an even different meaning. Here hope can be intermingled with trust. I hope my parents will pick me up on time. I hope my partner comes through on that important group project. I hope my surgeon knows what he or she is doing with that scalpel. <laughs> you see, it is here where the ideas of hope draw closer to the hope we profess and worship. Weekly through our hymns and in our scriptures and in our creeds, that hope we profess as Christians, as followers of Christ. For you see, our Christian hope, like our Christian faith, is not simply about our desires. It is not simply about desiring strength of body and mind and spirit when praying. Nor is it simply about merely mouthing a desire for God's will to be done and God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Nor is it about desiring to merely have some form of eternal life in heaven after we die. No, our Christian hope is about a desire for our prayers to be heard, yes. It is about seeking after God's kingdom, yes. Not only God's kingdom to come, that kingdom in the future, the already but not yet, but God's kingdom as it manifests here on earth amongst you people gathered here this morning, around us, within us, God's kingdom, God's will, and by God's grace is accomplished through the church. And facing our own mortality, Christ's hope is about a desire for eternal life, yes. But it is a hope that is inspired not by our own desires or our own thoughts or our own personal hopes, but rather by our hope is grounded in the realities of the good news of Jesus Christ. In this way, we are called to hope outside of ourselves. We are called to have hope, but have hope that is rooted in our faith. Hope that is trust in the gospel that we receive. That good news of Jesus. Our scripture lesson for this morning from Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the good news of Jesus Christ, this good news, this gospel. It speaks about the hope we have, a hope that is a trust and a confidence in Christ, which enables us as persons bought, brought out from the shadow of sin and death to embrace and to receive and to begin to live into the inheritance of life that we share with Christ. Okay, you might be thinking, uh, this sounds okay, a, a little preachy perhaps, but I get it. We receive good things. When we believe in life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that when we confess that Jesus is the Son of God, died for the atonement of our sins, and that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our tongues that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. I mean, while we're at it, let's just skip the whole sermon and go straight ahead to the Apostles' Creed and get it out of the way here a little early so we can get in time for that uh, Chiefs game happening at noon. <laughs> and I would say both, amen, and also not so fast. <laughs> for simply to recite the Creed and to mouth the words without faith, without the trust, is indeed no hope for us at all this morning. For hope is not merely something that is known, but something that is lived something that is longed after. For those that have hope, it is something that is felt. It's felt deep inside and indescribable perhaps, but it is felt in the heart. I invite you to think about a time 
that you felt real hope in your life and in your hearts. For you see, it is not the knowing of our minds that fuels our hope as Christians. For how could we possibly understand, as Ephesians writes, the immeasurable greatness of the power of God? No, rather our hope is understood, our hope is grounded in a trust that Ephesians declares is similar to the trust we put in our five senses as we navigate and live in the world around us. The trust that this podium will hold my papers. For in Ephesians 1.18, we read that the eyes of our hearts must be enlightened and that we must receive wisdom in order that we may see through the heart and understand, therefore. Ephesians tells us that the hope which God has called to us through Jesus Christ is a hope, is a trust that our hope, our longing for life spoken of in scriptures a life abundant not only with material possessions and pride in oneself, but abundant with love and thanksgiving and mercy and praise, that such hope, which is of God and not of this world, involves a transformation. It involves an opening of a sense beyond that of our physical senses, of a perception within a heart, our hearts, that is so often stubbornly closed. Our hearts that, because of sin, are often clouded with darkness. Indeed, it has held captive our hearts by the darkness of our rebellion against God, and we cannot see. Our ability to sense the hope that God has given us is held captive by, as Ephesians goes on to explain, a mind too consumed with the passions of the flesh, and I would argue too alive with the fear of death, that through such a fear we live in ways contrary to the wills of God, that we live in selfish ways. Lives, we live lives that, though perhaps there is a slight glow of goodness, since we were created in God's image, often our lives we live, myself included, keep us from truly living. We still hunger for something. We place our hope too often in things that demonstrate our own desires more than they demonstrate our hope and our trust in God. And often we live lives that keep us from truly bearing the image of God who created us. The image to which we are called to grow into and to mature and to become. Our God who created us not to dwell in darkness, not to have our hearts or spiritual eyes sewn shut with sin, but rather created us to love both God and neighbor, and it is this truer life to which we are called. It is this truer life to which our eyes, the eyes of our hearts are to be opened this abundant life for which we were created, that we continue to receive our understanding of Christian hope this morning. For words soon spoken during our celebration of communion here, our hope is that when our love fails because of sin, God's love remains steadfast. It is our hope that our hearts and our ears and our eyes and our very lives are open to the good news that God sent God's only Son to this world, our world, Jesus, who took on flesh as real as ours this morning, refused to live into the pattern of sin and death that defines our world, but rather lived to die. He lived to die so that sin and death, through Jesus' life and death and resurrection, our gospel, and as Ephesians states, by the immeasurable greatness of God's power, Jesus lived that the power of sin and death may be broken and that there may be hope, and that it may be broken through Jesus' resurrection, and that it may give us hope for life, true life, life eternal, life with God. And, in, and this is indeed our hope, that by hearing the good news of Jesus Christ and by opening our hearts to God's grace, we receive and we share in that inheritance of Christ, an inheritance that, put simply, secures our faith for life after death, a choosing life over death, hoping for a resurrection like Christ's, yes, in the future, yes, but also the resurrection that we can share in Christ by dying to our sinful selves each and every day, and rising each day with our faith and with our hope in Jesus in our hearts, resurrecting each day. As Ephesians teaches us, this, this is the glorious inheritance that we share among the saints.
And this is our hope. A hope for life, not, not only in the future, but in the very present. Now once again, this morning we are observing All Saints Sunday. Remembering not only those who have died in the faith, but also those who live in the faith. You all sitting before me. We who strive within our Christian faith, who continue to run with hope that race called life that is set before us. We who continue to run towards becoming more like Jesus each and every day. In all that we say, in all that we do, in all that we think, in all that we strive after. But far too often we as Christians defer the reality of hope in Jesus. And we defer the realities of hope, pushing them back until our death, pushing them into the corners of our minds. Far too often we relate in Christ only with those who have departed in this life. Or that our hope or our faith really matters in, only insofar as we have a security in heaven and the avoidance of hell. But this is not our peculiar Christian hope this morning. For many faiths believe in an afterlife. No, in accordance to the hope we are called to, such hope in reality begins not tomorrow, not 10 years from now, not 60 years from now, or when we're lying upon our deathbed, but, but now. For it is in the now. It is within the present to which, going back to Ephesians, the inheritance amongst the saints is considered. Our inheritance begins not with our death, Though we cannot imagine the glory of such an inheritance once this world has passed and is made new through Christ. But indeed our inheritance begins today. It begins in this hour. It begins by opening the eyes of our hearts to the good news of Jesus Christ. This gospel that we claim as Christians. This news that inspires a confident hope. A hope defined not by wishful thinking but by trust and assurance. Trust and assurance in the message, message of Christ's life and death and resurrection. It inspires trust and assurance in the presence of God through the Holy Spirit in our worship this morning, who can be sure continues through our worship and in our prayers. Even if perhaps we do not always notice it, do we do not always feel God's presence, God's Spirit is working upon our hearts. God's grace is working in our hearts and softening our hearts, opening the eyes of our hearts and letting the light of God's truth in, a light that enables us to see differently the world around us, to see God's will for our lives and to take note of the sin that tempts us and to have the wisdom and the strength to refuse such temptation. To cling not to that which gives temporary pleasure or gain, and not to that which no matter how much we consume, no matter how much we consume, always leaves us hungry again, but to that which is, begins an eternal work. We cling to that which begins an eternal work in our lives, a work not began at the end of our lives, but rather in the here and the now, and the confession of our faith and our hope in Jesus. So, on this All Saints Sunday, on this day where we remember those we have loved who are no longer with us, on this All Saints Sunday, may our hope for those we love who have departed not merely rest in our understanding of their absence from this life and their presence before God, but may it rest in the good news that we receive through the gospel. May it rest in our decision in this morning this day and every day forward to not dwell in the darkness of death awaiting the light and life to come but to embrace with hope such light and life now and live into the hope of Christ allowing it to transform our lives and our actions and our minds in the here and now indeed it is by embracing such hope that we claim communion with the saints a communion a relationship a reality that we call church. But church understood in the mystical sense, that mystical body of Christ that we are a part of, that we are become members of through our baptism by water and the Spirit, that is nourished, this body, by God's grace through means such as the bread and the cup which we will partake with soon. Such communion within Christ's body, the church, 
Yes, and do, includes the, the person sitting next to you. We are the church here at Silver Lake United Methodist Church. But, as it is founded upon embracing the light and life of Jesus' gospel in one's heart, in one's spirit, our Christian communion and the communion of the church extends, in fact, through time and space, with Christ connecting us all, those living in the world and those who have departed it, empowering us with the Holy Spirit, so that our observation and our celebration of this All Saints, though those living here this morning, ties us to those who have departed to glory. And indeed, find, we find a common communion in Christ, and thus we are given hope in Christ that death, death is never the end. And such communion, such good news, wipes away the tears of our loss. Often it shake, calms the shaking of our fists, in the midst of pain and death, and it breaks that staggering silence of the grave that many of us know too well. Indeed, Christ and nothing else in this entire world gives us hope that our love and our life, enduring now, will endure beyond the grave. That we have a hope that is not merely wishful thinking or selfish desire, but a hope, a longing, a sense of becoming that is established on faith and in trust, made real for us by God's grace working in our hearts in this very moment, made real by God's grace received in communion with Christ at Christ's table, of which we will soon share, made real to us in the powerful presence of God's Spirit. It is this faith, this trust, made known to us not through our five senses, but through the eyes of our hearts that bears our hope. And it is our hope that bears our ability to love and live in Christ to love and live through Christ with all the saints of heaven and earth, those before me now and those departed. So in closing and remembering and living into our hope, my prayer for you this morning are these words found in Ephesians chapter 3. I pray that according to the riches of your, His glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through His Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. I invite you now to join in our hymn Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Amen. At this time, we lift up those who have departed in the faith, in our litany of saints. Following the reading of our members who have deceased this year, I invite you to verbally, out loud, or in the silence of your own heart, to lift up those in your life, perhaps, who have departed and who have died in the faith, that we may lift them up in this litany as well. And with this, let us pray. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated at the throne, and to the Lamb. Therefore, let us give thanks for these brothers and sisters in Christ, to whom God has granted rest from their labors. Kenneth Broyles. Dwayne Stites. Jim Yeti. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, whom we remember today. Grant us grace to follow them as they followed Christ. Bring us with them to those things no eye has seen, no ear has heard, which you have prepared for those who love you. Give us faith to look beyond touch and sight, and seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Enable us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And bring us not to your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to lift up in the Apostles' Creed and recite with me the faith that we indeed root our hope in. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I invite those in the bell choir to come forward as they lead us in our time of offering. Invite the ushers to come forward.
join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed one, the resurrection of your son has given us renewed hope. We respond to your divine love and unfailing promise with, with these tithes and offerings. We give faithfully in support of ministries that enable others to encounter your salvation. And we pray in glory and honor of your Son, the Messiah. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we move into our moment of worship. Uh, where we go to God in prayer, where we lift up our prayers and our concerns, those things that weigh our hearts down, that they may be lifted up and the burden may be relieved through prayer and through God's presence. So I invite you, if you have any prayers and concerns, to please uh, uh, share them with the community as you feel comfortable. We'll bring around the microphone. If there are none, then let us prepare our hearts for prayer and for worship. pray. Almighty God, we come to you this morning with memories in our hearts of those who have passed from this life, family and friends who we loved and cherished, who have departed this world and whom we recognize as resting in your peace. God, we pray that you may give us hope this morning, hope that not only is death not the absolute end of life, but hope that the life that you promise us the life that you make available to us can begin this very morning in our lives now. Come, Holy Spirit, come and work in us a new creation and a new life in and through Jesus. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit may strengthen us and sustain us, guide us, embolden us, and give us hope in this life and during these times. Lord, restore in us your image Shape us, mold us, cast us into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the transformative power of your grace. Lord, we come to you with hungry hearts, and we pray that we may be filled with good things. We come to you with tired bodies, tired minds, and road-weary souls, and we pray for reinvigoration, for energy, and for life in you. We come to you in the midst of injury, of illness, in the midst of ongoing battles against cancer. Lord, give us strength, give us courage, give us stamina, and give us peace, that deep peace that comes knowing that we are not alone, that you do not abandon us to the trials of this world, but that you are indeed with us. Lord, we lift up a special prayer this morning for our country as the election draws near. Lord, as we struggle to understand who we are as a country and a people, and as we select leaders and drop our votes in the ballot box, may we not resign ourselves to desperation, but may we keep our eyes upon you, Lord. May our confession and hope be not in a political party, but in Christ. May we confess that Christ is Lord, and may all our other allegiances fall into place according to this the confession of our faith. Lord, in the doubt and the fear and the unknown of this age, may our prayer be similar to that of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Thus recognizing the hope we have in Christ and the victory of life that your son Jesus Christ has secured for us through his life, death, and resurrection, may we, bold in your spirit and in one unified voice, pray that prayer that your son taught us so long ago, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Amen. Glory forever and ever. Amen. The table to which we are called and the holy meal of which we will soon partake is does, just as our Lord did not discriminate against those who came to him, we do not either. And this table does not belong to the United Methodist Church, but to our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. And opening our hearts to God's grace, I invite you to join me now in this Holy Communion and this ancient Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper had ended, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from you, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all of your saints especially those whom we have named aloud before you and in the silence of our hearts. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. 
At this time, I invite those helping to serve to please come forward. Christ's table is set. Please come.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join in our closing hymn, Sing with All the Saints of Glory. And you don't know the hymn, but you know the tune. Uh, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. <laughs> Receive now this benediction. Go forth from this place with hope. Let us go forth singing praises of thanksgiving for the good news of Jesus Christ in the company of all the saints. Go forth in peace, alive with the Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.